Um, so I first started drinking alcohol when I was 12 years old, pretty much um, on a weekend basis. And at first it was just this like frivolous rebellion thing where me and a good buddy of mine, uh, we got away with it. And then we, we did, we romanticized about it and we felt like, you know, we were on top of the world and nothing can get in the way of us, right? Whereas when I wasn't under the influence, I always felt like something was gonna get me. And then drugs came into play when I was 14. After my grandmother had passed away, there was a sense of, of loss that I couldn't make up for and I couldn't understand it. With not being able to rely on my parents, my grandmother played a huge role in my foundation. And she was, she was like a mother. And in, in losing her is when I turned to, to smoking pot. And that quickly elevated into other drugs. Pills came on very early. By the time I was 15, I was drinking and taking pills and smoking pot. And very soon um, we were experimenting with cocaine. Uh, by the time I was 17, 18, was when I first was introduced to heroin. And that took things to a depth that I hadn't experienced yet. I did not know what I was getting myself into. You hear warnings in health class, but that is not sufficient enough. Um, it doesn't compare to the real life experience of it. And it wasn't until almost like a year and a half later when I found out what it was to be to be dope sick. There was another turning point where like using became the driving force in my life. I couldn't operate without some sort of level of intoxication. Probably a few months after turning 18 was the first time I got arrested. That stay was very short. It was only like four days, but it gave me this idea that this isn't so bad. And like, oh, I just can do whatever I want and pay this small consequence at the time. It was seemingly, it was a small consequence. And I spent from, from 18 to 21, those three years, I was either in jail or in treatment. And most of that time was in jail, maybe six months of those three years was was not in an institution. I spent my 21st birthday in the county jail. Among, I mean, I've missed, over the years, I've missed every holiday, every significant day, multiple times. After, after that stay, turning 21, I thought, like, I'd be able to do it on my own. I had experienced a few treatment centers, and I'm like, I don't need that. Like the stuff they're talking about, I don't relate to that. You know, that's all nonsense. And for a short time, I did do that, which again told me I don't need to do this stuff that they're talking about. I'm different. And then that didn't last. And uh, even with the birth of my two children, uh, that was not enough for me to step away from the drugs. There was chunks of time where it was enough, but invariably I went back to what was mine and heroin was mine. Until going through this process, it's actually the opposite. I was heroin's, right? Um, in the big book it says alcohol had become my master and I had, could not see that without going through this process uh, for myself. Uh, sometime after this video, I will be doing a video chat with my eight-year-old son. Uh, for the, I'm sober a little over two years now, and with no involvement of the court, uh, my ex had decided that she had to protect not just herself, but our children from me and what they had been exposed to. I was not physically abusive. I wasn't abusive at all towards the children, but I was not there 
as what they needed as a father. I, it's not like a proud moment, but it is the truth. And sometimes the truth is not, is not pleasant. Fast forward two years into my recovery, my ex decided to start talking to me again. And we're slowly rebuilding the trust and the communication. And just about three weeks ago, she said, my older son, who was only eight, he said, he's, he's okay with having phone calls. And we had two phone calls and he said, you know what, mom, I think I'm ready to have a video chat. We can't understand the effect we have on other people until we go and make amends or then we start helping others in the 12-step work and see that we can benefit them. Then we can start to comprehend the extent of the damage, but I'll never be in another person's shoes, so I don't know how they experience it.